our choir and our pastor. We thank you for everything. And that right now, we'll have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for gathering us here today. We thank you for all you have done for us, great and small. We thank you for the sunshine, and we thank you for the rain. We ask you that you just continue to watch over us. In a world in turmoil, Lord, we know that you are peace, Lord. Just watch over us and guide us and protect us. And we'll be careful to give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise that is due unto you. And all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. amen. And we will be having our scripture reading from Missionary Muriel Banks. So say amen for her. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. God, in him I will trust. Surely I will deliver thee from the snares and the fowls of the nuisance pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be the shield and buckler. Thou, thou shalt not be afraid for the terrors by night, or the arrows that fear thy day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at the noonday. A thousand shall fall at his side, and ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come to thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou be cold, and see the, the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is his refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall be no evil befell, the neither shall their pledge come nigh and dwell, for they shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. I have read you Psalms 91, verses 1 through 11. May God have blessed you.
upon each of you that have tuned in to hear us this day. I'm going to speak to you today from the third chapter of the book of Proverbs, very familiar portion of scripture. Verses five and six read as thus, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. God bless the reading of his holy word. I'd like to talk to you today from this subject, how is your heart? How is your heart? Physically speaking, the human heart is one of God's most amazing creations. The heart is one of, if not the most hardest working organ in our bodies. It will continue to beat automatically even if its nerves are severed. The heart beats an average of 75 times a minute, 40 million times a year, and two and a half billion times by the time a person reaches the age of 70. The heart produces enough energy, it is said, to lift a rail car into the air. The heart is an organ that is absolutely necessary and essential for life. We live in a day now when people are conscientious of health. People, if they go to the doctor and they receive news that there is something wrong with their heart, the doctor will tell them if they are physically able, you need to start exercising. You need to do things to strengthen your heart. Well, many people die every year because of heart disease. People take medication to strengthen their hearts, to control blood pressure, to reduce cholesterol, and to prevent blood clots. It's vital that we take care of what we call this old ticker, the heart. A study even showed that attending church is good for your heart. That's amazing. The risk of fatal heart attacks is almost twice as more for people who don't attend church than those who attend church once a week or more. A healthy heart is vital for a full and an enjoyable life. Talking about how is your heart. While it is true that a physical heart is important, as a preacher today, I would like for you to consider your spiritual heart. The spiritual heart affects the physical heart. The Bible says that a merry heart doeth good like medicine. We need to take care of our spiritual hearts. We need to guard our hearts against all diligence, for out of the heart flow the issues of life. God is more concerned, I believe, about our spiritual hearts than he is even about our physical hearts. Now, in reading the Bible, of all the people in the Bible, there's only one man who was chosen to bear the title of a man after God's own heart. That man happened to be King David. There was nothing extraordinary about David. He was just a man who surrendered his life to God to do God's will. And as all men, as all people, David sometimes chose his own way and he had to pay dearly for his choices. So if we would truly have a genuine heart for God as David did, 
then we must pursue some of the basic qualities that David pursued. The Bible speaks and commands us 250 times to love the Lord. This is a commitment of our affections. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. What we focus upon, church, is really what we love. That's why many people struggle with wrong affections because that's what they focus on. They are not focused upon the Lord. There's a neglect of the word instead of a daily meditating and reading of his word. There's an unfaithfulness to God's house instead of attending services and being there to hear what thus saith the Lord. In a cold, frigid area, region of Canada that's known as Alberta, it is said that there is an area where there is no snow. Year-round, there is no snow. All lush green grass grows there year-round. Someone did an investigation and found out the reason for that was because in 1939, an underground fire broke out. Broke out in a mine. It was directly beneath this area where the lush grass grew. And the thing of it is that the fire was never put out. And that fire is today what keeps the grass growing. The fire was never put out. We as God's people must guard against the devil that he does not put our fire out in our hearts for the Lord. Love is a decision, a decision to never let the fire of love for God die in our hearts. As our love for God grows, then our understanding of his infinite wisdom and love for us grows, and we then begin to grow spiritually. There was also a study done on babies, babies that did not grow properly. It was said that the nurses caring for the unloved babies were taught to look at the babies and taught to talk to them until the babies would fix their eyes upon the nurse. When the babies became aware of the nurse's faces, they started to gain weight and then grow. Well, our Bible teaches us that we should focus on Jesus. Our love for him should grow and our understanding of his love will increase as we focus on him. The result is that we will grow and develop a greater love for the Lord. So I invite you today to determine by faith to go in God's direction. Don't make decisions and then end up saying, I sure hope the Lord is going this way. Find out which way the Lord is going and then you head in that direction. Remember that God told you, trust not in your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In life, we often make decisions without consulting God and without seeking his will. So the greatest struggles that we face today don't come from Satan's attack. Really, our greatest struggles come from our flesh. Whether it's going to be my way or God's way. We have a choice today, church, to make. We have a choice to obey what we know is right or to obey and do what our flesh wants us to do. You do remember that Paul said that when he would do good, evil was always present. But then he turned around and informed us that I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. When our spiritual hearts get strong, 
we can do whatever is necessary to please the Lord. Keeping his commandments is not grievous, but is victorious as we obey God through his word. Each and every day, the choice is given to us to exercise our spiritual hearts. If the doctor tells you that your heart is somewhat weak and that you should walk to exercise your heart, he doesn't mean walk once a year, but you've got to get into a routine of walking. You might not run a marathon, but you've got to exercise to get that heart stronger. And so it is with the Lord. If our spiritual hearts are weak, I'm asking you this week to start exercising in prayer. If you're weak, start exercising in reading the Word of God. If your heart spiritually is weak, start meditating on the goodness of the Lord. This week, let's set our hearts on doing several things. Loving the Lord, walking with the Lord, and obeying Him, and watch our spiritual hearts start to get strong. Watch us begin to tell people I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me because you are having a stronger heart in God. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to encourage your people today to exercise our spiritual hearts. We might have been going to the gym or other facilities for this physical body. One day you're going to call into account not the physical body, but our spiritual bodies. And how our spiritual hearts are will determine where we spend eternity. I pray today that each and every one that listens would exercise in you this week that their hearts might become strong, not fainting along the way, but strong enough to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. I ask it in your precious name. Amen and amen. Again, we're delighted that you chose to spend this time with us in fellowship. If our ministry has enhanced and even helped you in your walk with the Lord, if you would be so generous as to hit the Givelify button and remember us with a token financially, we would certainly appreciate it. Those of you that have been sick and have been calling in for the Tuesday prayer services. We have victory reports of people that have been healed and delivered. Those who have loved ones and have gone to be with the Lord, our prayers are with you that God will strengthen you during this time of bereavement. Until next week, the blessings of the Lord.